Hi everybody, thanks for joining me for a new series in Convertible Conversations. I'm going to take two weeks, ten different days, to talk about what I'm calling the distinctive difference. I often get asked, well, Paul, what's the difference between what you believe now compared to what you used to believe? Well, here's kind of a synopsis of what I say. Some people seem to focus, in my opinion, on incorrectly translated words in the Bible, like wrath, hell, and punishment, and then build their religion around an angry, punitive, list-keeping, small-g God whose love is conditional at best. They fear and try to appease, as did Adam and Eve, that small-g God. They worship that God of exclusion who favors those who get it right. And that non-existent God is created in their own image as influenced by evil. They believe that grace only comes to someone who performs the right transactions and that grace comes with various degrees of condition and is limited. That group can be called transactional religion. They're not bad people. I believe they're sincere people who sincerely believe in their version of God because that's all they've been taught. Other people, and what I've come to believe now, focus on unconditional agape love that never keeps track of any wrongs, that included everyone in Jesus' finished work at the cross, that never fails and lasts forever. We believe that grace is love in action and that grace, love, has no conditions and is unlimited. We focus on the God who loves everyone unconditionally and God's ultimate reconciliation of everyone brought about through the cleansing, curative, and purifying white-hot consuming fire of God's love. We worship that God of inclusion who is love and who is exactly like Jesus, and we believe that is the true God. I call this belief pure grace as opposed to limited conditional grace. This new grace group, We start to see Christ in everyone. We see everyone as having divine inherent worth. We accept everyone and we love everyone as ourselves. We can't do that in our own ability, but Jesus can living through us. On the other hand, where I used to come from, the transactional religious group, at least this is where I was, tend to see others than our small group as those people, excluded from God and deserving of being separated from God and separated from our little group because our group is favored by God and is correct, of course. That group sees grace as limited and can only be gathered in, garnered, or uh, gotten in the first place by personal actions, and personal actions keep it. When, When confronted with the belief, now here's what I found, not everybody, but many people, when confronted with the belief of a pure grace group, Transactional religious people can sometimes get very angry and defensive and condemning and accusing and upset that the other group dares to believe differently than they and their group does, especially when we used to be part of their group. And I've even found that they pray that we get what we deserve. On the other hand, when confronted with the belief of transactional religion, the pure grace group, i found most of the time is generally loving, accepting, understanding, and praise that those in the other group will soon experience and enjoy God's unconditional love for all. Now, I, I'm making broad, general uh, statements there. I know not everyone in each group is like that. Of course, we believe that our version of God is correct, and so do they. I don't pretend to say I've got everything figured out, that I've got exactly the right answer, that I know it all, that I've got a higher level of understanding or anything like that. I'm just describing what I believe now and where I came from before. And I'm so glad that I know now that I have the freedom to make the choice of which version of God to believe in, relate to, and worship and enjoy. I never knew before that I had a choice. By the way, the transactional religion version that I listed earlier wasn't on the horizon of the first church and its leaders for the initial 300 plus years of church history. The pure grace group, however, describes Jesus' Father, the only true God whom the first church and most of the initial leaders knew and worshipped until transactional religion presented by the Roman church started presenting what I understand now as a false version of God in order to build the church's coffers and control the masses. We know that now from church history and things that have been discovered. So this week and next, 
We're going to use our sanctified imaginations to see what it might be like if everyone in our family, everyone in our neighborhood, everyone in our city, state, and country, and nation actually lived out pure grace. What would that be like? Can you imagine? Well, we're going to try. See you tomorrow.